How's it going, everybody? My name is Abraham Sandwich, and today we're jumping into my Blades build. Now, when thinking about making a Blades build, I wanted to do something that was different that I've never done before, which for me was not going into technical ability. I love crafting in video games. I love min-maxing, getting the best damage output to do the best damage I can. So not doing that was kind of a tricky thing for me, trying to navigate it and get still some amazing damage out of this build. But I can confidently say this build is broken strong. It honestly took me a while to fall in love with this build because I don't really like playing a video game and feel like I have to spam click melee or something like that in order to kill someone. However, now at the late game dealing the crazy amounts of damage, this build is a lot of fun, especially once you start using throwing knives and the mono wire. It's a really interesting build and I definitely recommend trying it out. One quick side note, I did end up streaming this character all the way from the early stages to eventually doing the secret ending. So if you wanna see this character absolutely destroy the secret ending, make sure to go check it out. I'll put a link in the description to that stream. So let's start this off by talking about the attributes. I decided to focus reflexes, body, and cool because of the buffs to crit damage and stealth damage and cool. You get movement speed and crit chance, also additional damage in the mono wire and mantis blades out of reflexes, and lastly body, purely for survivability and a lot of stamina, so I never have to worry about stamina when using melee weapons. I ended up putting 6 into intelligence for a couple pieces of cyberware and 5 into technical ability because <laughs> even though I said I didn't want to craft, I wanted to be able to craft rare items purely because it allows me to craft healing items as much as I want. Also, the Sand Division Neurotransmitter, it's kind of nice to be able to craft that to add to my Sand Division. All right, so let's jump into the perks. Under Reflexes, I put nothing into Assault or Handguns and everything into Blades. The only perk I didn't put anything into was Shifting Sands. The ability to recover stamina while dodging makes no sense when I have a perk in the body tree that I don't even consume stamina while dodging, so it just made no sense to me. If I had to choose a couple key perks, it would probably be Bloodlust and Death Bolt. This allows you to recover health upon hitting enemies. I also really like Float Like a Butterfly. Dodging increases damage with blades by 50%. There's some fun cyberware that I kind of did with this perk that makes it really entertaining for me. Obviously, anything that increases damage is going to be extremely helpful. One of my favorites, Judge Jury in the Executioner, increased damage with blades by 100% if an enemy is at max health. Since I'm going kind of into a stealth build here, my first hit is not only going to get this buff, but also the stealth buff. And I think the automatic one you have to get is Sting Like a Bee, increases attack speed with blades by 30%. And lastly, if you get access to it by maxing out the level, Dragon Strike is obviously amazing, increases crit damage by 40%. Moving on to body now, I didn't put anything into Street Brawler, Annihilation, but put a decent amount into Athletics. All of this is to help with my stamina consumption as well as my health. I don't know if there's any one perk I would specifically highlight. The obvious one is like a butterfly that I already mentioned, dodging doesn't consume stamina. I also really like marathoner, sprinting doesn't drain stamina, it's just kind of nice to have. Like I said, all I did was get perks that are mostly going to increase my health and survivability here. Moving out of body into cool, I put a decent amount of perks into both of these skill trees here. Under ninjutsu, I wanted to be able to use throwing knives, so I pretty much put perk points into everything that increases throwing knife kind of use case and damage. Uh, one of my favorites obviously being juggler. Whenever you defeat an enemy or land a crit hit with a throwing knife, instantly regain all knives thrown. Because if you didn't know, when you use a throwing knife, they have a cooldown and then they just get returned back to your hand and you can re-throw it again. With Juggler, it immediately comes back to your hand and you can throw it again. It's really fun. I also recommend getting Ghost. Detection time is increased, allows me to take advantage of stealth hits, doing a lot more damage. Of course, Assassin, 15% more damage against human enemies. And since I have 20, I'm able to get Cheat Death, allowing me to, well, Cheat Death. Under Cold Blood, I wanted to focus things that were obviously going to help me survive, but also they have the attack speed buff per stack of Cold Blood. Obviously, since I'm level 20, I wanted to get the Coldest Blood increasing the stack, as well as the final perk, Merciless. While Cold Blood is active, increase crit chance and crit damage. Just a really solid perk to get. And of course, Blood Brawl, while Cold Blood is active, increases damage with melee weapons by 10%. Makes sense. Like I said, Intelligence, I only put six points into it for specific cyberware, so there's no points involved there. 
but in technical ability, I put one into True Craftsman. Moving on to my melee weapon, I decided to go for Byako. I think that's how you say it. I have no clue. I'm horrible with pronunciations. Pronunciations, gosh, I, I just, oh, whatever. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of debates about which one's the best between that one, Jiju Maru, and of course, Satori, but this one was my personal favorite because it's special ability is it allows you to lunge at an opponent and because i'm just doing so much damage i just one shot anybody so getting something that actually allows me to lurch forward and changes my movement tech and all that stuff i just felt was way more fun for me honestly with a blades build when you're max level you can pretty much one shot almost anything especially if you're taking advantage of stealth and things like that so the choice of katana isn't going to be that amazingly different. One of the ones that I would recommend getting would be Scalpel because it deals electrical damage. Uh, this is really good because there's a lot of instances, especially like the final missions, where you're going to be facing a lot of robots and mechs and they're weak to electrical damage. Also, uh, you know, Adam Smasher is weak to electrical damage, you know, justice for <clears throat> Rebecca and David. I know a lot of people are going to be saying Jinchu Maru is the way to go. The gain 100% crit chance while Kreznikov is active is incredible. Uh, and the double damage on the last strike of a combo is really good. However, the last line of text, double damage against enemies with twice your current health. When my max health pool is over 800, this makes no sense for me. I don't think this is ever actually going to apply unless I'm facing someone like Adam Smasher. So it, it's, it's a good katana. I really like this katana, but I love how Byako's move set kind of changes things. And lastly, Satori, obviously a fan favorite with its insane crit damage buff. However, because I'm not going into technical ability, the amount of resources it would take me to level this thing up to max level would be insane. It would cost me probably a couple million in, in resources just to put this thing all the way to max level, and it's just not worth it for me. Don't get me wrong, if this was my main character, I would probably work on it over a couple of days, like grind out the resources because i'd want it to be able to be max level i'd want all the iconic blades to be the best they could be but it makes no sense for me right now and this current build especially when i have a ton of fun with biako moving away from katanas i really prefer the punk knife as my weapon of choice for throwing knife now how come i choose punk knife is because its recovery time is so low as well as its headshot damage percent is massive Landing a headshot with this knife usually breaks about 15,000 damage for me and sometimes into 20,000, which is pretty much a guaranteed kill. Now I did play around with the Blue Fang and Headhunter iconic knives that came out in 1.6 and their recovery time was 6 seconds and 11 seconds and that's just too long for me. One quick side note I want to bring up is I see a lot of people complaining about how you kind of, when you throw your throwing knife, how you sometimes switch off of it. One thing that I notice is, can you guys shut up? One thing I've noticed is that if you throw the throwing knife and don't click anything, you won't switch off the throwing knife. So the two second recovery time is really nice because I can throw my throwing knife and if I miss, I just have to wait for the bar to go away. However, if I immediately try to click, it'll switch me off to my next weapon. And then of course I have to try and switch back, which can be kind of a pain. So the two second recovery time is just what I wanted to use for that. Another weapon I'd recommend just goofing around with is the Cutomatic. I would not say this is a main weapon for this build, but I'm doing so much damage it doesn't really matter what I use anymore. So the Cutomatic is definitely my favorite out of the new weapons added. It does a lot of damage and is just a joy to use. Now because all I'm using is throwing knives and katanas, I usually don't like to fill my last slot because to me my third weapon is the mono wire. And since you can't upgrade mono wire, this thing does the maximum amount of damage it can possibly do with my reflexes and the fact that I have the legendary version of it. For my mono wire, I decided to go for electrical damage, high capacity battery for the 50% charge bonus, as well as the crit damage increased by 20%. And this thing is insane. You can see right now its DPS is 3,200. However, if I pull out the weapon, there's something weird about this game where when you pull out a weapon, its stats will change depending on who you are. And you can see now I'm doing 5,000 damage a second. I think it has to do with my attack speed increasing by one point, so my DPS goes up. This happens with every weapon, even the katanas and the throwing knives. After playing around with it with this blades build, I would definitely say the mono wire is my absolute best weapon by a large margin. 
it not only does a massive area of effect, but pretty much one shots every enemy I come in contact with. It does more damage than any other katana, any other throwing knife that I have but also does it in an area. It's so broken good. Also, I'm using the electrical damage one because I wanted extra damage against robots and things like that. Plus, electrical damage is just kind of a cool thing to me. Since we've kind of already segued here, let's dive into cyberware. A majority of the cyberware that I got is just to help me survive, such as heal on kill, second heart, the bio monitor, shock and awe, you get the point. A lot of these are just to help me survive situations. The two pieces of cyberware I got because I have a level six intelligence is limbic system enhancement and visual cortex increases crit damage by 6% and crit chance by 2%. Just a little extra helping hand there. The couple that I wanna highlight is the maneuvering system paired with the Kresnikov. Since there are perks in the blades tree that increases your damage while performing a dodge, being able to perform dodges in midair is a really interesting and fun mechanic to play around with, especially pairing it with the Kresnikov, holding block while you dodge, slow down time, get crazy damage. There's a lot of things here that kind of combine really well, make it a lot of fun. I also really like using optical camo because I can go full invisible and just clear a room without anybody seeing me. Tons of fun. Subdermal armor, absolute must in my opinion. I'd say the micro rotors increasing your attack speed by 25%. Double jump is an absolute must for me. And last, the Militech Falcon Sand Division Mark V. I decided to go with this one because I liked its increased damage by 15% and increased crit and crit damage by 20% but it also slows down time by 30% for 18 seconds. I decided to fill my sand division with the neurotransmitter increasing crit damage, the prototype chip increasing crit chance, and lastly heat sink reduces the cooldown of the sand division. Moving out of cyberware into clothing, this was kind of a tricky spot for this build because usually I go find like the armadillo mod crafting spec or any other crafting spec that I want and I go buy like legendary clothing or go find it and just put all the mods I want where I want and get it done with. However, with this build, in order to get the stats that I wanted from my armor, I had to go find legendary armor in the open world and cycle its stats and mods. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, basically, if you find a legendary piece of clothing in the open world, you can randomize the amount of mod slots and the mods that are equipped by running away from said piece of armor and returning back to it and things should shift and change for it. Is it a painful process? Absolutely. It takes a very long time of cycling a piece of armor to get lucky enough to get the armor that you want for your build. However, at the very end of it, I did get a set of armor that I'm very happy with. And obviously because of the outfit system, I don't have to care anymore about the looks of it. I just am getting stuff purely for stats. I'll quickly go over each set of items so you can see the stats. I have crit damage, an additional 8% crit damage here. I have an armadillo mod here, as well as block reduction. Didn't really care about that. Bonus damage against high threat and moderate threat enemies, as well as another armadillo mod. I got armadillo on my pants, as well as mitigation strength. And lastly, crit damage on my shoes. Since katanas and melee weapons have a very high chance to crit, I felt like it was a good idea to go for the crit damage. If you're curious about the outfits I decided to go for here, I decided to go for sort of a blacked out look here and then the whited out look here. Uh, this one just kind of felt very Star Wars-y in a weird way, but I kind of liked it. One quick thing I do want to mention that's kind of interesting about this build, because I have max level in body and reflexes, I have access to a lot of perk points within these skill trees that I haven't yet attained. I went through and counted it all up. There's a total of 26 perk points within these skill trees that I can unlock purely by leveling up these skills. So if this were to be a main character and I were to spend the time to level up Athletics, Annihilation, Street Brawler, as well as everything in Reflexes, the amount of perk points I have means that I could probably fill out an entire another tree here and be a little bit more dual purpose with this build, which is a really interesting thing, I think. Or if I wanted, I could just go into Street Brawler and just use bats as well as my katanas. Also, if you didn't know, you can find perk points just in the open world. So definitely do your explorations, do some side missions, go find some extra perk points. 
Anyways, that pretty much wraps up this build video. Let me know what you guys think of this. I'd love to hear your opinions and thoughts on what I came up with here. What do you like? What do you don't like? What would you change? I'll be down in the comments paying attention and trying to get back to you guys as often as possible. Also here at the end of the video, I am going to be going to locations like where you can find a legendary punk knife, some of the pieces of clothing I'm wearing, and specific pieces of cyberware like the maneuvering system in case you don't know where to find these. Let's start by going into the location of the maneuvering system. This can be found at the Ripper Dock in Santo Domingo along the riverfront here at Mission Waterfront. Next, the legendary punk knife can be purchased from the melee vendor at the beginning of the game. Really easy to find. Now, if you're looking for some of the clothing that I have for my outfit, they can be purchased mostly from three different vendors. Some of the pieces of clothing I just found through natural exploration and missions and stuff like that. But the first vendor is in Kabuki in Watson right here. The second one was this clothing vendor in Westbrook. And the one where I got a majority of the white armor was at the clothing vendor next to Canary Plaza. Again, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.